today and welcome everybody. My name is Jess and this is Cheap Ass Beauty Blogger. Today I am creating a cut crease look, very inspired by the current unicorn and festival colours that are on trend right now. This is my first time ever doing a cut crease and I have to say it looks pretty good. So without further ado, let's get going. The first thing that I'm doing is applying a yellow based concealer to my eyelids to help with colour correction and then blending it out so that I have a nice base to work with for my eyeshadows. Then I'm going to add a light coloured concealer over the top to eliminate any remaining yellow tones and to create a light base for all the colours to pop. Then I'm applying a face powder to my concealer so that everything is nice and set and nothing will crease and keep everything looking nice and fresh throughout the whole day. Now I'm taking this bright purple eyeshadow and a fluffy brush that I'm going to use to blend it all out nice and soft and I'm just going to start by mapping out approximately where I want like the base of my colour to be and then slowly using a mixture of circular and windshield wiper motions blending that into not only my natural crease but slightly above it so that when we do cut my crease later there will be a light, nice smoky outline at the top. I'm now taking a darker purple and a more tightly packed denser crease brush and I'm going to run that along the same lines except slightly higher less onto my natural crease so that there is a deepness and a smokiness to the look when, when we start to cut the crease later. I'm now taking a bunch of synthetic brushes, either angled or packing brushes because I am working with cream to powder shades and first I'm using very soft light strokes to gently just map out approximately where I want the cut crease to be and I'm also going to be defining approximately where I would like the wing to be because I decided I was too lazy for gel eyeliner. Also apologies for the weird lighting but I don't know what was happening, I think it was overcast that day. But like I said, small soft strokes and apparently rubbing motions and just very gently defining where I want that wing to be so that I can go back in with an angled brush later. Now I am packing the colour on because I am also going to be working in a gradient for my cut crease and I wanted to make sure that where I have my gradient wasn't going to cut my eye in half. So I ended up working in thirds for the look. Now I'm just redefining where I want the wing and filling it out a bit, adjusting it to suit my eye shape. And now I'm taking an angled brush and just defining all those lines a bit better so everything is nice and crisp and clean. Now we are moving on to the next blue shade which is this really beautiful oceanic mermaidy kind of colour. Also quite metallic and again I'm just very softly defining where the crease is. Now I'm taking that blue colour and I'm going to start blending it onto the mobile lid and also blending it into the previous blue so that the gradient starts to work really really nicely. Dancing. Um, and again on the other side and as you can see I'm using the angled brush to again define where I want the baseline for that crease to be but also as I'm working I'm starting to move above the mobile eyelids crease into where I actually want it to be seen when my eyes are open and so that is a lot of what I'm doing currently. Despite the fact that I am putting foundation on over the top, I want to clean up any lines that I've screwed up, so I'm using a wet wipe. And now I'm taking the next blue colour that I'm working with, the lightest blue, and I'm placing that on the inner corner and blending that out into the rest of the blues. What ended up happening is that all the blues kind of melded together, but I quite like the effect of that because now it's just this really lovely wash of light to deep mermaid blue colours. And honestly, I think it looks just as good. Hell yeah. I'm applying some primer really, really quickly. This is a mattifying primer that also reduces pores and has some redness control in it because I am quite red in this video. Now I'm applying a mattifying foundation to my face because I have an oily skin type. I want to make sure that throughout the day while I'm wearing it, it can stand against my oils. And this particular foundation that I'm wearing does do that quite well. It is my tried and true. I'm also making sure to blend this out with a sponge so that I can do two layers because I want to have that slight sheerness so that the two layers don't look quite as cakey. And I'm applying two layers so that I can skip the concealing step and instead move on to using a concealer as a highlight. Also using a light hand with that and applying it to my forehead 
for much of the same reason that I apply mattifying foundation because I want to make sure that my oils in my t-zone are not coming through. I do only bake lightly rather than doing one that I can wipe away later because otherwise it can quite dry out my under eyes and make them really wrinkly and very very creasy. Um, and I also apply powder to my t-zone so that there's an extra layer of protection. And then I apply a setting spray to just melt everything together. I'm now applying a really light layer of bronzer. I apply this to my cheekbones, my forehead, under my jawline and I do actually put a little bit on my nose to just add some warmth. And then I'm going in with a really lovely purpley blush that actually does have a little bit of a sheen to it. I do like this look with this kind of blush because I just find that it makes the whole face look a little bit dewy after we've just done all those mattifying steps. Now I'm taking the first blue and a very, very, very light hand and running it on my lower lash line so that I can make the look a little bit more cohesive. Then even though it's kind of not noticeable, I was using the second blue to deepen that color out more on the outer edge. And then I'm taking the crease shadows both together and just smoking everything out so that it just all ties together as one. At this point I realized I hadn't done my brows yet. And because I have quite thick, naturally sculpted brows, all I'm really doing here is taking a slightly lighter pomade than my natural brow hairs and filling in any blank spots and also just filling out my tail because that is the one thing that doesn't have as much definition as the rest of my brows. I'm being really light handed with this and trying not to go too far in and too far out. And then I'm applying a clear brow gel to just brush them up and set them in place because I do like that feathered natural look in my brows. I'm now applying a really light coat of mascara and afterwards we'll be applying falsies. I'm trying to keep the look as light and wispy as possible so that it doesn't detract too much from the cut crease look which is quite dramatic. I'm applying some wispy space lashes out and now let's just watch me trying to apply lashes. Is it on? Is it comfortable? Is it good? Good. Now as you can see I'm having a bit of trouble with this lash. I think I waited a little bit too long and it just really did not want to stick down in the inner corner. So I spent a good 10 minutes I think trying to make this lash work and then ended up resorting to just fixing the problem rather than reapplying the entire lash again. So here I have one of the mascara ones that I use to separate any clumps in my lashes and I'm just applying a tiny bit of lash glue and then applying it to one side of my tweezers. And what I'm doing is I'm using that side of the tweezers to gently rub some of the glue off. Sometimes layering it and then wiping the tweezers off and sticking that lash down properly. And I do leave it down for just a second to make sure that it's all sticking properly and then I can adjust my lashes. Now I'm spraying my face with some more setting spray because what I'm going to do is while it is still wet apply my highlight over the top. I find that this really intensifies the glow a little bit and also prevents a lot of the texture that I would usually get plus also helping melt it into my skin and making it look quite dewy rather than very matte and metallic. 
I'm now applying a nice nude pinky shade to my lips. I basically wanted a my lips but better kind of idea so that it wouldn't detract again from the dramatic eye look. And this is my final look. Time to watch my narcissistic <laughs> montage beauty. I always feel quite ridiculous when I film these bits but they're really really good because you get to see the look at all these angles and get to see up close what my face looks like. I have texture, I have pores, I have frizzy hair, but I still look really, really good in this makeup, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and that is the end of this video and the full tutorial. If you really, really liked this video and you want to see more, make sure you hit the like button the subscribe button and then once you've subscribed hit that little notification icon so that you can be aware of my next video. I love you guys all so so much and wish me luck in this competition. Goodbye!